Well, good morning. This is Joe Van Cleve, and uh, we're here out on a field trip along the uh, eastern edge of Albuquerque near the Sandia Mountains. And this morning, the purpose of this video is going to be for investigating how to use and uh, design uh, homemade tripods for pinhole box cameras. So, what I have right here is one of my uh, nicer little tripods. This is made from 48 inch long hardwood dowels, tropical wood. They're 7 eighths of an inch in diameter. The feet are covered in 7 eighths inside diameter copper plumbing pipe caps to protect the wood against the uh, whatever you find on the ground. And the head of it is a triangle that's made from um, black walnut. And the uh, the legs hinge onto the, the uh, platform with these angle brackets, hardware, and nylon locking nuts. So you might be asking yourself, why would you want to make a tripod in this day and age when carbon fiber lightweight tripods are readily available from many sources? Um, there's never been a better selection of commercially made tripods. Why make your own? Well, there's a couple reasons. First of all, there's the satisfaction of handcrafting, designing your own tripod, of course, the do-it-yourself ethic. But there's also the matter that tripods like this, made of, of hardwoods, are surprisingly light and strong. Um, this particular tripod weighs less than two pounds and uh, that is really light and it has an enormous load-bearing capacity. Um, the other thing about tripods is this particular design and the other tripod I'm going to show you don't have collapsible legs. These are fixed length legs. Now that might seem like a great um, limitation and for some applications it would be but for pinhole box cameras where the camera itself is relatively cumbersome having a very compact tripod is not really much of an advantage I find with my collapsible Bogan tripod that I usually extend the legs set the camera on it and then I carry it around with the legs extended anyways. I never collapse it uh, between shots. So walking around with a long tripod is not a limitation. Okay, so here are some of the close-up details of the tripod. So it, the head of it is a triangle made from I would say three-quarter inch black walnut the legs are attached with these angle brackets that are screwed into the bottom of the base and there are machine screws that go through um, the leg at the top and then there's a nylon locking nut that you can adjust for tension but basically the legs spread out there is a quarter twenty bolt with a, uh, hand, a knob on the, on the uh, bottom and it has a recess hole on the top of the plate with a nut that retains the uh, the bolt and you can adjust the height of how far above the plate this bolt extends with an adjustable nylon locking nut down under here. Now for adjusting the legs to make sure they're spread out and tight I have kind of a unique system that I came up with and about two-thirds or halfway down the legs I have these screw eyes into all three legs and running through the screw eye is a loop of nylon cord and this is what I call a tension loop that keeps the legs taut and I'm going to show you how that works now. When you set the tripod up you want to spread the legs out and you can adjust the legs in various degrees and this loop will slip on all three of these uh, screw eyes and you just got to make sure that you have the loop under tension. Now, the thing is, I usually point the front leg toward the subject. And then, I can level the tripod head horizontally by adjusting the back two legs. Either this way, which tilts it there, or I can adjust it like that, which tilts it there. 
So there is some degree of tilting potential uh, side to side to level the head of the tripod. Now you can also level the head of the tripod uh, vertically by spreading them out equally it tends to raise the head and by pulling them back close together it tends to lower the head. But all of these adjustments are relatively limited in range because you don't want to go too far with it otherwise the center of gravity of the tripod gets unstable. So for basically leveling the tripod um, to slightly uneven ground you use this tension system, you pull it tight, make sure the legs are set, and the tripod is very steady. Okay, but let's say that you have uneven ground that's a lot more uneven than what tilting uh, or moving the legs can adjust for. And let's say you really do need um, an adjustable head. Well, what can you do then? Well, I took uh, this ball head off of a lightweight carbon fiber sun pack tripod and it has a quarter twenty uh, mount on the bottom and so I can simply take this and screw my ball head onto this tripod and now I have the full range of motion of the, ball, of the ball head on the lightweight tripod. Now get this, the total weight of this tripod plus the sun pack ball head is about the same, maybe slightly less, than the weight of the sun pack tripod by itself without the head on it. And keep in mind, this is a small, lightweight, carbon fiber and aluminum tripod I'm talking about. This is still lighter, and it has much greater load bearing capacity. So this is my small tripod. I use it for smaller size pinhole box cameras, and it's very, very uh, easy to use. I usually carry it over my shoulder like this with the camera attached when I'm out in the field. Very easy to use, very easy to deploy and set up. Okay, this is the second uh, tripod that we're going to be discussing today. This one is also made of wood. It's much taller than the first one. This one is about a little over five feet tall when it's uh, set up. Um, instead of being made of um, small, round, hardwood dowels, this one is made of one by two spruce with a spruce top. And uh, it holds a lot of weight. But the tripod itself only weighs five pounds. So as an example, the tripod that I'm currently shooting video on is about eight or nine pounds. So this is very light for the size and load capacity. Let's look at some of the features of it. Okay, well, so here's the tripod head. The um, top of it is a rectangular piece of spruce. There's a hole for the tripod uh, quarter 20 bolt to come up through. I'll show you that in a minute. Underneath <coughs> the plate are two bubble levels, one here and one here, to help you level the, determine the level of the tripod head. The legs attach to the base with these angle brackets, very similar to the small tripod, but they're connected also with these side brackets here. And I'm using these thumb screws, bolts, so you can tighten up the legs. <coughs> the uh, center bolt, the quarter 20 bolt, is <coughs> mounted on a, has a wooden knob, and it goes up through the hole in the plate and protrudes up there where you can attach the uh, camera to, and when it's not, when you're transporting it, it just hangs freely with a, with a cord here. Um, down below, I'm using the very similar kind of tension loop system. It's just a heavier grade of cord. I like to use this nylon cord because it has a little bit of stretch to it and it helps to make sure that the legs stay tight. On the bottom of the legs I'm using these angle brackets on the corner pieces to kind of reinforce the wood so the wood doesn't degrade by you know when it hits the ground and stuff. So <clears throat> overall it's a very solid tripod and it'll hold the largest of my box cameras. Again, to level and use the tripod, you want to first stretch out the legs as far as they'll go. Again, I always point uh, one of the legs toward the subject, and then the back two legs, I can alter their position to change the left to right uh, leveling. And I can also pull them back to get a slight downward level, or pull them apart to get a slight upward level. So again, it works very similar as to the other tripod, the way that this tensioning triangle can be 
use to simultaneously brace the legs and help adjust the level. And again, if you have any more need for adjusting the head of the tripod than what the leg system will provide, you can always use a ball head from another tripod. Again, just put the bolt up through here, thread it on, and you're good to go. Then you have the full range of motion of a ball head. Again, the weight of this tripod is five pounds. That's almost half of the Bogan tripod that the video camera is currently on. And this holds uh, an incredible amount of weight. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that I, if I wanted to, I could probably hang off this tripod all 200 pounds of me. And, you know, it's very, very strong. So, again, homemade tripods, there's a lot going for them. You get lightness, more lightness, uh, a lighter tripod, more strength. You get the satisfaction of building it yourself. And you get to customize it however you want. So that's it for today, homemade tripods. This is Joe Van Cleve up in the, uh, East Albuquerque by the Sandia Mountains. You have yourself a good day. Thank you.